Well, good morning. We're talking today about the book of Galatians. We're walking the Royal Route 66, which are uh, all of the books of the Bible, 20, uh, 39 of which are in the Old Testament, 27 of which are in the New Testament, and we call these the Royal Road because they are our opportunity to walk through the messages of Scripture. Uh, and as we do that, particularly uh, in the New Testament, we get a, a greater view of our experience in uh, the Christian life and the Christian message. The book of Galatians was probably uh, Paul's earliest letter in the New Testament, written about 60 AD. It was certainly one of the earliest in the New Testament, and the challenge that Paul confronts is the core of the gospel. And here's the question. Does the Christian have to keep the law to truly be saved? Paul demonstrates that salvation by faith is the way Abraham became a child of God, and it's the way you and I become children of God in the same way Christ uh, redeemed us Abraham is a child of faith or a father of faith for us, and the Judaizers simply uh, could not overcome that core gospel message. These Judaizers were Jewish missionaries to the people who lived in the northern section of what we would call Turkey today, and it was easier for them because they were in many ways less educated than the Jews, it was easier for them to be swayed by these Jews who seemed to teach uh, something they had not heard of before. So they taught that keeping the law was necessary for salvation. And Paul said, uh-uh, that's to miss the gospel entirely. You need to follow what the scriptures teach and that is Paul goes on in his introduction here in the 11th through the 24th verses of the first chapter to defend his apostleship. You see, there were those who said, well, what does Paul know? He wasn't, uh, he's not one of those who were, was, was with Jesus. But Paul says, not only did I meet Christ on the Damascus Road, but I went three years into the desert and there the Holy Spirit taught me the truth about Christ and about redemption. And it's out of that experience of training uh, in the desert that Paul writes these 13 or 14 books uh, of the New Testament, uh, beginning with Galatians as, as one of his earliest books. So he's saying, don't lose the heart of the gospel. The heart of the gospel is Jesus is the only way of salvation. It's not Jesus plus, it's Jesus alone. And so Paul wanted them to affirm the faith that he has shared with them. In the second chapter, you may recall that in the first 14 verses, Paul and Peter had some confrontation with each other. Peter, who uh, was the leader of the early church and preaching in the first 10 chapters of the book of Acts, primarily. Uh, Peter had come to be with the Gentile Christians uh, with the church, and Paul was there, and they all ate together with the Gentiles. But when people from Jerusalem came, Jewish by background, not Judaizers, but Jewish Christians, Peter stopped eating with the Gentiles and sat down with the Jews. And Paul said, wait a minute, Peter, we can't have this mixed message going out here. You either trust Christ and you profess that God has blessed the Jews and the Gentiles with his message, or you fail to demonstrate this life of Christ that I'm preaching. So Paul and Peter had uh, 
controversy uh, between their behavior and Paul's confrontation. Then he moved to the 15th verse of the second chapter, and he begins uh, to clarify by saying, justification is by faith, not by the law. And in verse 20, we have one of the most uh, quoted verses uh, of the entire Bible. And, and in the King James, it says, uh, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. So, Paul says, ultimately, when Christ comes into your life, you die with him. He provides you eternal life. You are forgiven because of the cross. Then we go on in the third chapter, and with a long section, Paul demonstrates that justification is by faith and not by the law. We have to understand that there's a lot of confusion among people who live today as well. Some would say, well, I, I, keep, I keep the Ten Commandments. You know, I follow God's way. That's not enough. Christ died for your sins. When your sins are forgiven, you're ready for heaven. But if you don't believe that Christ is the substitute for your sins, keeping the law won't do you any good. And that's what Paul was saying about the Galatians and about Abraham as well. In, in the sixth verse of the third chapter, he said, even as Abraham believed God and it was accounted to him for righteousness, know ye therefore that they which are of faith, the same are the children of Abraham. And the scripture, foreseeing that God would justify the heathen through faith, preached before the gospel unto Abraham, saying, In thee shall all the nations be blessed. So then they which be of faith are blessed with faithful Abraham. Here you have the positing of Abraham as the father of faith, that is, the one who believed God and it was counted for righteousness. Just like you and I believe God and it's counted for righteousness for us because of the death of Christ. Paul then goes on to talk about something which is significant for you and me. We are heirs of grace and not by law. When Paul writes this passage, he talks about the child who is the heir to the father and all the blessings that come and the substitute, the child who is not uh, God's uh, child by faith. And Paul says, this child learns because the law is a schoolmaster. It's the, the trainer of the child. If you and I had a child and we wanted that child to learn whatever it was, you wanted your child to learn Latin or music or whatever, uh, you would have a schoolmaster. The schoolmaster was the person who took the child from your home to the home of the teacher and the teacher taught the lessons and then returned the child home, the schoolmaster did, so that the child was safely returned to his place of residence at that point. The schoolmaster then was a servant whose only responsibility was to bring the child to the teacher. Paul says that is what the law does. It brings us to Christ, and in Christ, we find redemption, we find God's full forgiveness, and we discover that he has given us the, the spirit uh, to dwell within us and allow us to be 
developing righteous lives as Christ is the example for uh, all believers. Not law bondage, but living and sanctification by the Spirit is the theme, is the key. And finally, he says, brotherhood in Christ is superior to legalism because of the love that God has not only shown us in his spirit, but that God shows us in Paul's teaching about a burdened brother who needed help, about uh, teaching a teaching brother who needed assistance along the way, uh, a brother who uh, had a new life and needed to be taught or grafted into this new life, uh, the new life as a beneficiary of something God has done. And finally, in the sixth chapter, the new life demonstrating sacrificial love uh, that has been given us by the Spirit. Christianity is a living relationship with Christ, not a ritual or a religion. If you and I get that, we get the core knowledge of what the gospel is all about. The key verse of Galatians uh, is this one. We have believed in Christ Jesus that we might be justified by faith in Christ and not by the works of the law. This is chapter 2, verse 16. It's the core of the message Paul wanted to speak against the Judaizers because the Judaizers said it's by the works of the law that we become followers of God. Paul said, no, we have believed in Christ and we are justified by faith in Christ, not by the works of the law. So the law is important. It's a schoolmaster, you remember, to bring us to the teacher. The teacher is God. When the law leads us to what we need and shows us how we have failed, then Christ redeems us and gives us new life in him. So we're taught to walk in the spirit and we will not fulfill the works of the flesh. That's Galatians 5 verse 16. And finally, the key promise of the book is I have been crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live. But Christ lives in me. Now my, may I live by faith in the one who loved me and gave himself for me. It's the greatest experience that you and I can have to die with Christ, not literally on the cross, he died for us, but to die in him to the old life and to be born again to the new life that Christ offers.